Welcome to America. You're so racist. <laughs> 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 no, welcome, welcome back to North Carolina, man. You've uh, you've been gone for how long? So, I officially took a break in April. Dropped all my jobs. So January, I dropped um, PCA, personal care assistant, and then, but it was actually, I was just doing paperwork. February, I dropped doing um, my products with Nutty One by Nature, um, um, a product line of mine, the cosmetic products, you, you were there for it. In March, I decided to uh, drop my nail salon well, actually, no. In March, I dropped my Airbnb. In May... I didn't know that. Yeah. And then March, April. April, I dropped the nail salon. So I dropped so many jobs, but I was thinking about all of this since October of last year. I didn't have the balls to do it because I was like, then I'm going to have nothing. So I just worked really hard for those four months and just slowly dropped it and just saved up my money. And I'm sure everyone would be like, that's four months. Like, what is four months? If you actually spend accordingly, you could actually live quite a while, you know. So I took a break since May, and I just started going into work in August. Um, my brother has properties in St. Augustine, so I kind of took over three people's jobs. I created a system where everything became automated. So then, um, well, so now I'm a property manager for vacation homes. Uh, the system that I created was able to answer to guests. So the day that they book, you get a confirmation code, and it sends through these hosting sites. So I'm over bookings.com, I'm over VRBO, Airbnb, and a, a few other traveling sites. So every time they book, everything is automated. The day that they arrive, you get your passcode, your house manual, um, your house rules, things that they need to follow before they get there, their parking or whatever it may be. And then um, day before the departure, like you have a list of things that you have to do before you leave. And then two days after you leave, you get like um, a reminder of, um, hey, write me a review if you could. And tell people how you enjoyed your stay or if it, if it wasn't, you know, let me know so I could figure out how to better the system and better the property. And so, yeah, I created the system in the month of July. And I felt like I was kind of bullshitting my way there because I was just like how much do I really know because I don't know and so I YouTubed everything I had someone to assist me so I tested out for one week and I was like all right I think I could take over the job taking 25 percent of your profit as much as the other people are doing only I'm going to give you quality because I actually create a guidebook for yourself as well so my guidebook actually gives you uh, information on um, activities that you may want to do while you're in town. So whether you're wanting to do um, going, going out to eat, uh, seeing the attractions, um, going out for drinks. Um, hey, I don't know how to use a remote. Oh, okay. So this has a house manual of certain things that I need in order to feel comfortable being in a vacation home or even the passcode or the internet password. So now that they're seeing that, they're just like, wow, this is a, like a high-end place. Like they answer to everything, and I do. I created um, a system where my maintenance people were always on time. They had a problem with that, but I realized it wasn't because of the maintenance people, it was because of the relationship between you and the people that work with you. So it's true, you started from the bottom, now you're here. I've been where I was the maintenance man to like fix everything and like just trying to make sure that everything fell in place. My cleaning team, I was just like, so how is it that you're getting like uh, a certain date or certain time that you're cleaning? They're like, oh, we just wake up with a text message that says we're cleaning these units. I was like, how does that prepare you on how much you need? In, Cause like I'm, I'm over 12 units. So like how much, like how much would this help you to prepare for the day? They're like, we're never prepared. I was like, how does that feel? And they're just like, well, I don't know how to feel. I'm just lucky for a job. And it's like, mm -hmm. that hurts me because I'm just yeah. like, no, you should always be prepared. So it makes me prepared. So I was like, okay, so I'm, I created a spreadsheet where I just shared the email. I'm just like, all right, at least we'll be on the same page. I'm going to give you a week notice just so we'll know like what we're doing ahead of time. 
but be aware that things may change in between time. We might get a booking the next day or even within the same day. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that the people that managed the property before, they BSed a lot of things. And they they BS so much that they ended up making other people not do their job correctly. So how the other people managed it, they were paying by hour. When I met these cleaning people, this one guy, I was just like, oh, hey, my name is Hu Yen, and I'm new to town, and I'm possibly taking over these properties. And he's like, okay. And I was like, would it be okay if I take your number? Because I see that you're cleaning around the houses. And he's like, sure so he gives me the number and i was just like so how long have you been doing he's like i've been doing it for like a year or two i was like you like it he's like uh, it's okay it's a job i'm like cool i was like well if i start running the company you know i'd love for you to reach back out to me he never reached back out to me at that moment within two weeks i've already taken over 12 properties he okay. reached back out to me within a month in and he's like hey so it seems like they're not reaching out to me no one's reaching out for me for work I was like, I couldn't even respond to him because he didn't reach out to me. So I'm just like, I'm not being fair, but I'm like, he's not dependable. Like, Makes sense. Uh, yeah, cut him off. Makes it's sense. not worth my time. So basically, you fired him is what you're saying? No, I never hired him is what I'm saying. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I, okay. I just like, just let him go. Like, be prepared and know that people don't deserve a second chance. They weren't there for you in the first place. So let it go. <sighs> I don't know if I agree with people don't deserve a second chance. I cut throat and I have been happier ever since. Really? Yeah. I think that since I've been like cutting people off, I valued myself so much more. Like I started, you know, I do nails as well. So it's like I started working at the salon in Florida. And at first they're they're so slow. They're like one fifth of what we're used to at the salon in North Carolina. We're top rated third in the state. And we have customers that wait from one to three hours just waiting on us to give them services. Great. But it's like the customers are rude. They don't tip us. And they talk to us like we shouldn't like give them any other kind of service but to treat them like kings and queens. But having your customers tell you you're only working because of us. You only have a job because of us. The customer's always right. Customers are always right. And guess what? For every dollar you dig for and you're like, I understand. What would you need? You get tired of it because it's exhausting to know that you have to play with your mind in order to make everyone happy. And so I was working at the salon where I felt like I was being cheated on by my own people and how I was getting paid. But I did it for the family. Certain things, you just bite your tongue and just do it. When I went to Florida, um, I practically work on less people, but they tip me so much more. I'm doing a $40 service, and they're tipping me 20 Do you think it's your clientele that you have in Florida versus what you had in Winston-Salem? For Carolina? sure. It, it is because of it. Well, they, had, but then, but they then, got more money. It is more money, but then you were comfortable being treated like crap because – that's the only money you knew. You're just like, well, it's another $20. I, 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 could, I could bite my tongue. I could shut up just to make sure that I get paid. Yeah. That's the mindset from yeah. being here. Yeah. When you go to Florida, they're like, I just want my, I just want to look good. Can you make me cute? And you're like, yeah. So, but I gotta go, you know? So it's just like, their mind says, I just want to look good. I trust that you want to do good and that you're trying to make me better. But here it's just like, oh, I'm the best, and you're gonna treat me the best, make me look the best. You missed a spot, you need to get to it. And so like the mentality is so different because the wealthy knows how hard it takes to get where they are. But the people that's always lived in a lower end, they didn't work hard because they've been depending on the government, you know? It's like my mindset changed too, going to Florida, because I was just like, in Winston, it was just like, man, girl, we could get food stamps. Like, shoot, and I don't even need to do the paperwork anymore because I had food stamps before. It was tremendously, like, awesome. And then, like, I was astonished at the fact that our mindset of getting things free versus we got money now, we could pay for it. Right. Like, what a relief to think that. Like, I got money now. I could pay for it and know that what I worked hard for is finally going to 
my parents' bowl of food. Mm-hmm. But before it was just like, man, I gotta figure out how to lie th- on, on this paperwork. It's just like, it's a constant mm-hmm. battle of lying. And if it wasn't that though, it was just the fact that it was like, are we doing the right thing? Even now I was mm-hmm. able to triple, like double to triple my pay. And so then that's only because I manage properties and then I do nails because like the property management system is not working itself. We're sitting here. My property is just like doing its own yeah, it's thing. It's all automated. It's all automated. Yeah, yeah. The only awesome. time I actually reply is when they need extra towels. They don't know how to use a remote because they haven't clicked mm-hmm. on the link that says here, use this. Yeah. And, and it's okay because they're new to the system. But once they get used to it, they're like, I want to go back to them. They've done such a great job. Mm-hmm. If you look at all my reviews, I'm like immediate with everything because everything I do is on my phone. So if anyone sees me on my phone, I'm not even carrying around a laptop. I used to always carry around my laptop everywhere I go. Now it's just like. Uh, That's dope. Technology, that's man. Technology. So I, I have a question. Um, first, I, we, I haven't even officially introduced you. Um, welcome back Hi. to the Rondell Lane podcast, y'all. Um, I don't even know what episode this is. I'm just honored to be here. So but, even if you, you know. Yeah, but we're here today with, what do what I call you? Uh, okay, so. Cause you I, have, got I guess two plenty names. of names. Um, right now, I guess I'm officially Huyen. Forever, it's always been Jenny, Jenny from the shop, and I fell out of love with the name because I kind of want people to know my true identity. Yeah, you were you were giving your slave name. I was giving my slave your name. Slave name. <laughs> Why do we have to do that? Like well, because, every other race has to do that okay, except for. Well, I don't think it would be a slave name. It would but I mean, you like, know what I'm saying. It's like a nickname that's just easily matched with a person that you want to be. It would be like an Indian dude with a huge beard and his name's John. Like, man, <laughs> your name's not John, man. Well, honestly, it was because, like, I came from Hawaii. So, like, we were very... That's where you were born? I was born in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. And I was there for a year. After a year old, we moved to Hawaii. And it was because, like, m- my parents had to make sure that they were able to take care of us. Because I'm the youngest of 11. There's so many of us. How the hell is my parents going to take care of us? Even though, like, my older siblings were, like, working in meat markets and stuff, it just wasn't enough. They wanted more money. Mm -hmm. So my parents wanted to make sure their kids were going to school instead of just making money. So all the kids started going to school in Hawaii, and my dad became a long-line fisherman, so he got, like, tuna and stuff. So, like, we came from practically nothing. Like, people were just like, Jenny, you wouldn't understand. Like, dude, you weren't knocking on doors to sell fish. Like, we had to do that. Like, we had to go to church looking for clothes, you know? Like, I didn't know means, that. yeah, like, we. I always thought you were just some rich <laughs> exactly. Kim Kardashian type chick. And it's like, you know, but then I never looked at it in any other way other than, like, we were able to spend so much time with each other. It was quality, quality of life that we don't have anymore because right. we're so busy making money, right. you know? And, like, just sitting at home waiting for our brother to get home because some order got messed up. It was like, oh, we get to have pizza today. Or like, huh, what are we going to do? Like, can we walk to the beach? My sister was like 10. It was like 10, 11, and then I was five. We were taking the city bus. Can you imagine wow. that? Yeah, and then we were like just traveling to get to the cousin's house because we don't have any transportation. So it was just like we did a lot on our own. And like, you know, Everyone was just like, I think it's time for mom and dad to stop working. So around like 97, 98, we came to North Carolina and then started opening up different salons in different states and different areas until we hit the spot. So the salon that we have in Winston was the target spot. And then my dad didn't have to work anymore. My mom was just chilling at home. And then all my older siblings, all of us, we started working in the shop. And we just kind of hung out like the only bad part was we're still irresponsible we're like we're, let's cut off the light i don't want to go to work today you know yeah. and it's like but we also love staying at school because like, it was our chance to not be so serious we're yeah. always serious being asian is so difficult because you have to live up to expectations like you can't like be dressed a certain way you can't be you can't speak a certain way. You can't look a certain way. It was just all of it. And you had to be perfect at home. Like, you cannot speak English at home. You had to speak the own language. But it's just like, they never had to tell us, though. So we just ended up being good kids all the damn time because everybody else did it. We should do it, too. Yeah. Like, and I never had friends because there was so many of us. 
But then as like my older siblings like left, I was starting to feel alone because I was just like, I'm the only one that's not established. I don't have kids, I don't have a family. I just have my parents. But I didn't want to leave them. I didn't want to leave them for school. They're just like, just go to school. Then you can leave mom and dad. I'm like, but no one's going to be home with mom and dad. I'll just find different jobs. And they're just like, well, go find a husband. Then you know, he just take you out. And right. I'm like, I don't want the bitch to take me out. Like, I can take myself out. Like, I was always in long-term relationships. Two to five years. Maybe they were in long-term. But then That's it was, long-term. Yeah. And then it was just like, I never moved out with them. Because I was just like, they weren't like my brothers. These guys were nothing like my dad and my brothers. And my dad and my brothers, like, were such gentlemen, you know? Yeah. At, at least to, like their wives right you know and i'm like no this shit don't look right it don't even sound right like nothing is right so then it was just like all right so all my siblings left and then here i am alone with my parents and then it was like pull the mic a little close to you well you can you can pull it so then later go. on i guess it just became where um well what do i do now and then this is how i ended up meeting new friends and then I only have a s- selected few, you of one, you know, like a handful of friends that are similar to how I was raised. And I like that, you know? Mm-hmm. I hate that I don't have two hands full, but yeah. one hand is enough, you that's know? All you need. That's all you need. <laughs> like, high five to life. Like, that's, I guess that's all I need. Like, we're so busy, we don't have a chance to meet up with each other or do things with each other, but our goals are right with each other. Yeah. Like, we see eye to eye. Right. Um, but I think that's why, like, I kind of left, too. I felt like growing up around this area, I was always just so comfortable with how people spoke to me and did things. You had to get out of your comfort zone. I had to get out. And because, like, I had leverage, like, I had a safe net. My sisters and brothers were always there for me. It's okay for me to take a vacation. I worked all this damn time. Yeah. I deserve it. I spent so much money creating stuff that I was just like, all right, I'm burnt out. I give up. I need help. So it was almost like rehab, but yeah. So let's kind of backtrack. Um, Cause you know, I dabble in the real estate world a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and you said you let go of your Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah. So kind of to update you guys, like she had an Airbnb. Um, when did you, was, was, was that towards the end of last year that you? Well, I had it for about three years and the pandemic just kind of put me through depression and it was difficult to find people to help but it it was like a rundown home but i only chose one unit the house has three units and i pretty much made it into like an upscale luxury home what it looks like outside does not look like what's inside and i just thought that you know maybe this could be a good turnaround and then the problem was that the neighbors in the same home that's next door underneath me was causing issues. What turned out bad was that the contract did not say, do not smoke in the house. So uh, we were just waiting for those people to move out. But by the time they even made up their mind, I was, I'm done. Yeah, you're done. So I walked off. Is this your home, the place that you were living in? It belongs to my brother. And we just never saw eye to eye. Uh, with the property that you're living in, is that what we're talking about? The, the, the one in Winston, the downtown Winston, the one that I used to visit you at. Yes, that's the home we're talking about. Yes, that's the home that we're talking about. So, you're already so you're not you're not Airbnb in that no more. No more, I did not know that because it was yeah. it started out doing really good, right? Yeah, it did until those people underneath me just kept smoking up a storm, like they were hot box in that place, you know. Oh, and it was like, yeah. I'm not gonna argue with my brother because yeah. to him, he's like, I'm making my money, you know, and I'm just like. I cannot tell him like anything. So we, we split the property, whatever it was, whatever was my share. I just got back and I left. You, oh. Did you sell it or is it still? It, it's still there. Gotcha. But then he just took over. He gotcha. just gave me my money back I said, for what I out. invested. Bought you out. Gotcha. Because like, okay. it was practically a gift. You know, it was just like, here, it belongs to you. You could stay. You could make money, whatever, whatever it is. And then it was just like, I guess he realized that. I could potentially make more money. Right. Like, yeah, let me get this back. (laughs) Right. So when I dipped, he's like, I'm going to give you your money back for how much you invested in it. Well, at least he bought you out. He did. So, I mean, you can't, you can't have any hard feelings. The only, yeah, I couldn't have any hard feelings. It's just the fact that my own brother did it to me and it happens. Yeah, it happens. You remember I told you that you were going to end up doing nails again and you're like, no, I'm done. Yeah. 
You're back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, How did that happen? Okay, because the customers, they're so nice. They're so appreciative. And, are, like, it's the only time I'm not on a computer. So are you working? Is this a, are, are you affiliated with the people, the owners? Or is that family? So the or is people this? that own the property also owns this a lot. Okay. And they were just like, you come work whenever. We're open to, like, have you work here as well. I'm like, I'm stressed out today. I'm going to the nail shop. And, like, gotcha. anyone that speaks to me, they're like, you go to the nail shop for fun? I was like, I love it. I love that I can meet people, talk to people, and, like, you know, introduce myself to, like, this whole new field, mm-hmm. you know? And it's only a new field because the environment changed. And that was enough for me to be like, all right, let me get to know the town. And nothing, it like, nothing breaks it down better than someone that sits one-on-one time with you. Yeah. They're going to talk about whatever. I'm going to talk about whatever. Right. And it's like the bar, but without drinks. Everybody wants to be heard. And, you know, I want to listen. And once I got the hang of it, it was just like, it's not such a bad place. I felt invited. Um, but my properties are in St. Augustine. And the salon is in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. And I feel like those are the best two How places. How far away is that from each other? Um, about uh, 40 to 50 minutes away from each other. Okay. Yeah. And the drive isn't bad because we're driving, like, there's two ways to get there. And the main way that I always go is just driving past, like, beach houses. Nice. So you're like, it builds your dream, yeah, yeah. you know? If you can't see yourself in this creation that you're like, oh, one day I'll be there, it's just like, it's not big enough. Yeah. You know, I agree it's, with that. it's only big enough if you can't see yourself right. there. But right. If you see yourself there. Yeah. No, it's not big enough. Like when I sell like yachts, I was like, I never thought about yachts. That's crazy. Like that is it. That's That's possible. It is. Look, like, there's, there's people that own possible. multiple yachts, you know. Right. Um. So with you um, finding your way back in, into like doing nails. Are you. Do you see yourself finally ever teaching it? Because, you know, we talked about those things before, like teaching it, maybe doing YouTube. Um, um, because life is so different doing nails. Like, I felt like I was doing nails to make money in Winston. But now I'm just doing it for fun. Would I do a video? I would not, only because the, the services are different. Not that I half-ass my customers, but what customers want in Florida is different from what they want in North Carolina. So people in Florida is just like, I just want a quick fix and go. I see so so I'm not giving any quality videos. Cause if you want me to half ass stuff, like I could show you that kind of video. But these people that have mm-hmm. money and they're wealthy, they're just like, I just want like quick service. Someone who speaks to me Someone that gives me attention. Like, that's all they want. For lack of a better word, I'm going to say poor clients versus rich clients or (laughs) well-to-do. Excuse me. Bless Mm -hmm. you. Thanks. Um, COVID-19, you've been traveling. I might have. You've been been traveling. I'm building your immune system. I'm listening. Um, (laughs) So would you say that working with clients that have money, are they less of a pain than broke clients yes okay just wanted to hear that from another i do i do feel that way at first like you know you're just like can't i just can't ignore like arrogant people but <clears throat> but because i see the quality of people i could i could pass the ignorance like but then like well arrogant mm-hmm. versus ignorant when they're arrogant, they weren't taught to be a certain way. They feel bad for you, but they don't know how to how say to, it. Right, right, right. So they're just like, oh, you're so cute. Like, thanks for doing that. Yeah. But if you were like that in Winston, it's just like, who the hell are you talking to? But then here in Winston, it's just like, you're only standing because of me. Like, the personality changes. Yeah. Like, those wealthy people just don't know how to. So they're only going to say how they know. Right. Arrogant. They don't, like, you know, everybody's just, like, different. Here in Winston, it was just, like, I was just being mistreated. So, right. like, they don't know how to communicate with people either. Okay. So it's just two different fields. And how do you, f- well, so 
the shea butter. I absolutely loved your shea butter. I still use your shea butter. Um, why the collapse of Nutty One? Um, I'm very stubborn of a person. And it's not that it wasn't quick money for me. And I know that I wasn't going to be in that salon well. And that, I mean, for a long time. So it was just like my money was coming from that salon. Like I was able to like figure out what would do well selling in the salon. So it was like a store, a storefront without being in a store, gotcha. you know? And e-commerce was such a challenge because like I can't be competitive. Like I have to be able to like market myself and like be able to like pay up. Right. And every check that I made was going towards nutty. And I was going nutty. I was just like, I can't afford this anymore. Yeah. So I just completely dropped it. And after seeing how like my, and I always said like, one day when I make enough money, this is what I want to do with it. And then now I'm just like, I'm going to leave it to this world to make their own money. Like if anything, I want to actually donate my company to a friend. She doesn't know it yet. I'm going to tell her today. Nice. Yeah. Um, Breaking news on the Rondell Lane <laughs> podcast. Because like, she works so hard. She's such a hustler. Her name is Joyous. And is she here? She's in Winston. Uh, she went through uh, quite a bit of errors in her life, and she just tries to be such a great person. And to me, I feel like if I can't trust anybody else, like I could trust her, like someone that's willing to put in the work. You know, that's really hard to find. Oh, link link us up because I need I need to re up my supply. <laughs> There's actually like um, a store that sells in Curtisville, so okay. I'm going to remove some things from her store, but of course I'm going to be giving it away to this young lady that doesn't know too much about it. That's pretty dope. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I had plans to like donate quite a bit to uh, the cancer center because I always donate um, to the cancer center, but I'm gonna. After I hand it over, I'm gonna give her some ideas of what she can do, or what she can make out of it. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty awesome. Giving back, <laughs> giving back to the people. For so, sure. um, how long are you in town? So I'm gonna be in town until tomorrow. I was gonna book to stay a little longer, and I was just like, there's a reason why I needed to go back home. So, there's one property where we're changing out windows, so I gotta prepare for these groups of people to come in. Gotcha. So um, um, I'm booked for the weekend for all 12 properties. So I got to make sure the setup is good for all the guests. Mm -hmm. And then when they get up and go, I got to make sure that I'm prepared to have all the materials and everything ready for my maintenance people to come in and remove the windows, uh, take care of termite issues or whatever it may be. How are you dealing with um – inflation and so right now um we're going through a mass uh layoff um for the whole world like maybe not the whole world but at least for the united states and so i just found out through my sister uh, she's a designer director in new york and like she was just like hey you guys be prepared because she's the one that hires people and we're a little slow but the wealthy people, they don't care. They're still gonna make their money and make their plans to take vacations. So my weekends are booked. My weekdays are not as booked. So I'm gonna lower my price so it could be booked better. Yeah, make it. Um, right okay. now, um, I'm also working with a market analysis. So what that does, it it gives me an overall uh, match of how much people are charging for their rooms mm -hmm. in the area. I'm paying a little bit more, but it helps me. Um, target how much I should charge people and instead of me going into the system doing it manually automatically it does it so it just changes for whatever matches the area yeah the layoffs it's not just it's not just America it's, mm, okay. it's worldwide um, there's also there's all type of signs of uh, major financial collapse on top of food shortages oh yeah and that's supposed to be all the conspiracy theorists are saying like three to six months, things are finna look insane. And it it's so crazy, you know, like growing up, like we've always like learned how to like, not like we kill for our food, you know? 
is like you go to a farm, you butcher a cow, or like raise your chickens. But most like, people don't know how to do that though. Yeah, because we were spoiled. We just thought that the grocery <laughs> store was always gonna exist. Right, yeah. and it's so different. Like fresh chicken, fresh beef, everything tastes so good it when does. you kill it yourself. My but parents like, grew up doing that stuff. But but then it it sucks when you watch these gruesome movies and you're like, no, nah, I can't kill shit because right, right, I right. feel like I'm killing somebody, right, right. and it's just like damn then become vegan or something yeah, then because yeah. like there's no other way you just have to kill to eat so we talked about your business ventures you know what you do to make money um a little bit about you growing up so what does jenny do well i called you jenny who you in yes that sounds horrible we'll, we'll, we'll go that with sounds it. horrible man it sounds like you're making fun of my name i'm not i'm trying to say I it no but that's it's, the it's funny part but that's that's why that's why i go with jenny though just like when black people our names get butchered by other people. Yeah, Rondelli. Like, like come on. Sweet Rondelli. Exactly. So, what do you find yourself doing for fun, for leisure? No work. Just, what does Huyen do on a regular day? So, I pick a random restaurant. I just started this TikTok. And I've been seeing your TikToks. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Okay. So, I figure out how to do the system. It costs you, though. Every day that I did a post, I paid $20 to promote the posts. Why? Like what what Be, what's your reason behind this? Because it cuts the system. People's gonna wanna follow because I mean, what's your goal? The goal at the end. What's your goal for trying to boost your TikTok? Because at the end I want my properties to have like some type of value. Gotcha. Um because they're gonna be like, Oh wow, there's videos on these properties? That's dope. That's right. Like, wow, she has helicopters available to like fly to look over the town. Wow. They, they have that. Um, so, you know, I have dreams. I'm kind of working on it. So, yeah. And I feel like the fastest way to get to certain things, you just got to pay up. So you spent 360 something over the course of a month? No, I only paid like 135 and now I have a thousand followers within four days. Really? Okay. So what? You want to talk are about Are they money? robots though? Or are they real people? No, they're real people. Like they actually have videos on these people. Like you yeah. should go in through my followers. I will. Sure. They're all guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. You know? Sure. They're all guys. Who's this pretty Asian girl? What What? What exactly? Were you, were you, were you Asian just is a continent? Like what are you? What's I'm your, Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Okay. So even though they're all guys, it's kind of like a Google review, right? We, we base things off reviews we don't look at who it is we just see what they have under their file same thing with tiktok you might be a guy but let's see what videos you post that's true you know yeah. and then like right now is tiktok's picking out my people to follow me i have not post videos to do uh things of like oh i want females that focuses on traveling because right now i'm just building followers gotcha i want people to know Oh, she got a lot of followers. She must be legit. Gotcha. Right? So then, um, yeah, what, what's $20 every two? So $10 a day. Are you mon Are you trying to monetize your TikTok also? I don't know. I I'm mean, not sure exactly. You probably should if you get, if your account becomes eligible for it. I mean, that's just extra money. Yeah. I mean, I know, for sure. I know and, people and making 10 grand a month on TikTok. And it's been so fun. Like, I've never been so confident. Like, imagine the many times that I spoke to you, and every time I see a camera, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, y'all do not know. She is so, so camera shy. She was so camera shy a few years ago. She's, and then, like, now I'm just like, I'm ready to show the world. Like, I'm really not that bad of a person. Like, maybe, maybe I was never bad, but the mentality of like where I was here made me that scared to speak up. But now I'm just like, the hell with it. I am. It is what it is. I am who I am, and it's okay. I saw you doing transitions the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, I was on TikTok, and I saw you do like the, you went like this, and it changed. I was yeah. like, oh, look at Jenny. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how to do that on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, so I was just like, it must not be difficult. And I just sat there and did it. And then I started doing videos of like me dancing, just being stupid, just learning to be able to accept yourself. And so the goal of what I'm doing right now is showing the many personalities that I have. And some people are probably like, why is she doing this? Why is she doing that? You're questioning it now. You're right. questioning why. You're thinking about it. Like, you. that's so much. That's so much to me that you're yeah. questioning how much of a, a person I am. Yeah. I don't care if you're a hater, a lover, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But now I'm in your thoughts of, like, yo, 
she's doing something. That's Hell dope. yeah, I'm doing something. That's dope. I caught your attention. <laughs> I, I would like to think that I have a little bit of uh Dude, credit. I couldn't have done it without you. Just like just, just a little you're, bit. you're the reason for my confidence, you know? I remember at the beginning you're like, no, just do whatever you want. And I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Right. How do I know what I want? I don't even know what I want. I don't even know what I want with my, my life right now. Yeah. And here I am. I'm just like throwing on clothes. I'm, I'm lucky if I look kind of decent. But I forgot. Like, you already know the system. You know how to make me look decent. Like, sure, I might need some advice on, like, how to pose or how to move. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I have to do my homework, too. Right. For Amused. Right. And then, like, you just kind of make me look good. So it's just like... Having the ability to know that there's opportunities to learn so many different things, you just gotta be smart about it. And honestly, so I've been talking to this guy. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> so, anyways, so I've been talking to this guy, and um, like I probably should never talk about this because like uh, okay, so he reached out to me on Airbnb and he wanted to pay cash for a property. So he was like, "Hey, can I have your number?" And I was just like, "Yeah, sure." I gave him a. T- Give him my number because I was like, yeah, at this point, I'm like, whatever. I have 12 properties. They never kicked me out. But then this guy, he got kicked out and banned. and But he got to me. So that means he's able to get these properties with cash instead of doing everything through card. Like, I haven't, like, made any deals with him. But it became a relationship. Mm-hmm. We just started chatting every day, just getting to know each other. And, like, he's a perfect 10 to me. Like, you know how they're like, oh, you know, he's a perfect 10, but something happened? Mm -hmm. Well, what makes him not a perfect 10? So go ahead and guess it. Uh, Man, you're the worst. I I don't... don't So you don't find any flaws in anyone? Like, oh, she's a perfect 10, but she drinks a lot. She's a perfect 10, but she has two kids. It could be anything, though. It can be. How could I guess that? It could be an almost infinite... So what would it, what, from knowing My first thought would be he's in a relationship. I know. I think I'm in the, I think we're in a relationship, possibly. Okay. So you don't know. So he's not a perfect 10 because he doesn't speak English. He does everything through Google or not even Google, like a translating system. God, so you can't talk to him. So he does, he's a millionaire. He's been in America for seven years. And you know how you know how to count. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, he's so smart. Like, I didn't fall for him for anything. Like, he looks pretty good, you know, really decent. But his personality is just, like, he's not too good. You know, he might not be a millionaire. He might even be, like, freaking homeless and just chatting with me on WhatsApp. But it's like he teaches me things that I should start learning to value. Have you met him? No. We're going to meet next month. So we told each other that we're have, not going to talk have, to each other. Have you FaceTimed them? Nothing. You could absolutely be in catfish. <laughs> it might be. I have a cousin that. But then remember, I fell in love with the person that he is and his mind. Like even if he's homeless and fat and ugly, I think that he surpassed, like he passed that. So you'd get, so you, okay. That's it. This is interesting. So if you meet him and he's, you said he don't speak English. He's. So he's using a translating system. So what is he? He's Chinese. All right. So what if you meet him and he's uh, an African guy that you. That's fine. You're just going to ignore every all the lies because. I never thought. Because his text game, his text game was good? Yes. That's crazy. Yo. Dude. Okay. So these are things that he said. Um, we need to open our minds to allow ourselves to accept more fresh knowledge. Because sometimes we're just like, but we were taught this way. There's right. no other way. And it's just like, you know that. what? You're right. I need to be better. I agree with that. Because it's like cheat sheets to our life. Mm-hmm. Like, like, go hacks. out here, start reading. Start asking people questions. Don't limit yourself. And we sometimes do because we, we're so busy making fun of like, man, I'm so dumb. He, he, don't say, he doesn't even let me joke like that. He's like, don't talk like that. He might really be a millionaire because the millionaires I hang around, that's the type of stuff they be saying. Yeah, it so was he just, might be. It's just like, you know, I'm like sleeping on couches. He's like, but that's not where you want to be. Where do you want to sleep on? You know, let's talk about how we're going to get there. What have you studied so far? What have you read? Are you into literacy? Like, are you at the library? Pick up a book. Don't play on your phone. But it's just like someone is 
really setting me in my place. That's dope. Yeah, and it's like I never had that. Y'all hear this, people? And women want to be led. Yeah, it's true. Like I was telling him that um, I was going to. You know how I am with the photo shoots. Like I get to have fun and do these different things mm. with Rondell. Mm. Like I get to look hot and sexy and stuff because like I never had the confidence. But then like because in real life I'm always following up on my reputation. So I go, some of my photo shoots are risque because it's the only time I feel like I can be out of character. It's the only time I don't have to be responsible, reserved, and conservative. Although photo shoots makes me feel nervous, but fun. He goes, but you need to get yourself out of this. So simple. He didn't say like, don't be like that, don't be stupid. He said, but you need to get out of this. In a text, y'all, yeah. in a text. I'm like, wow, he's so hot. <laughs> don't even know the guy. He could be an ugly, fat ass guy. And I'm like, oh my God, dang girl. We're gonna get ready to wrap this up. Um, but before we go, like, you still didn't really tell me what you're into. Um, oh, oh, what are you hobby? watching? What are you watching right now? I watch nothing. You don't watch anything. I don't watch anything. Do you I have really... Netflix? Do you have? Do you pay for a Netflix subscription right now? No. No. No Hulu. Nothing. Because I want to live in the moment. I want to go to a restaurant and eat and record it so other people could like see the experience. But no. Okay, but you can't be in a restaurant when you're at home. You got your when tank at, top and sweatpants on on I'm the couch at, what do you do when i'm at home i pinterest how my home should look so it's just like ooh, i want to lay the carpet here i want to put this decoration here it's like it's never ending on how to make myself feel good and like how i should live it i'm creating the tiktok video the past two three days but then that's it i'll go through stories that's that that's all work though no but this is crazy I would look at my stories. I don't look at anybody else's stories. I'm like, dang, does that make me a narcissist? A little bit. But, but then I'm just like, but why are these people still following me though? Like, why are they still looking if I don't ever look at their story? I'm trying to build like content, you okay. know? And once I get comfortable enough, I could get where I need to be. Well, you need to be on YouTube. Oh, well, you need to be on YouTube. Yeah, I just, yeah. You should probably do YouTube. But only you can make a whole YouTube about running the real estate stuff. Which is gonna bring more attention to the real estate. I'm actually studying for real estate right now. Really? Yeah, we yeah. we gotta we gotta talk off camera about <laughs> this whole real estate because we might be able to do some business together with yeah. properties down there in Florida. We love it. We can split them. But all right, we're gonna get ready to head out of here. I think we're gonna grab some lunch and we got a photo shoot uh, before she heads out. You canceled your trip to New York, correct? Yeah, I canceled the trip to New York. Because I actually wanted to fly to New York for a spa treatment, but then they were booked after my flight got booked. Um, I don't know. Like, I shouldn't live this way, but I'm just like, I've been working hard, and I really wanted to go to this place, yeah. but yeah. So you're, so you're heading back to Florida when you I'm leave I'm going to head back to Florida and uh, finish some errands for my properties. Gotcha. And then, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for finally... I can't say finally. This most of this is my fault. But we've been trying to plan a podcast for oh, at wow. least two since twenty twenty. Yeah. Like I, I've I've been to her old house, set up mics, and then realized never happened. I didn't know how they didn't work. It was a long story, but we finally made it happen. I appreciate you for coming by. Um, where can the people find you? Where can they follow you at? Um. What's your TikTok? What's my TikTok? Shit! Like I only know my TikTok. You don't know. Wait, she doesn't know. She's trying to build a community, but she doesn't know her TikTok. Because I only, yeah, you're right. You it's Huyen underscore natural underscore nutty. Huyen natural nutty. I'll put that in the description. So <laughs> check her out. Check me out. Rondell dot lane on Instagram. Rondell lane on TikTok. And we will catch you, or I will catch you in the next episode. Peace. Follow. Thank you.